Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Amanda, otherwise known as the Tango Skeins Crafter here on YouTube. Um, today I am starting a new start for my birthday and I thought while I stitched on it I would give a book review on a book I just finished. The book that I read, well actually I listened to on audiobook format is a uh, 19 Minutes by Jodi Picoult. It was first published in 2007. I'd never heard of it. And it was recommended in a book club that I'm in on Facebook. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'll listen to it. And um, at first, I wasn't sure how I felt about it. But I really got into it and found myself really wanting to finish it. And I just wanted to listen to it instead of doing anything. I didn't want to like do my homework or watch TV or anything. I just wanted to listen to this book. Still took me like maybe a week or so to listen to it because I had so much stuff I had to do. But let me read you the summary in case you've never heard of it. This is from Goodreads. It says, 19 minutes, Jodi Picoult. Uh, the narrator is Carol Monda. It has a 4.16 rating out of 5. The best-selling author of My Sister's Keeper and The Tenth Circle, Jodi Picoult pins her most riveting book yet with a startling and poignant story about the devastating aftermath of a small-town tragedy. Sterling is an ordinary New Hampshire town where nothing ever happens until the day its complacency is shattered by an act of violence. Josie Cormier the teenage daughter of the judge sitting on the case should be the state's best witness, but she can't remember what happened before her very own eyes. Or can she? As the trial progresses, fault lines between the high school and the adult community begin to show, destroying the closest of friendships and families. Um, its genres says fiction, contemporary, chick lit, adult, drama, adult fiction, young adult, realistic fiction, mystery crime, or mystery crime. Um, it's on a bunch of shelves. I won't even go through all that. I did leave a review on Goodreads. If anybody's interested in any of my reviews, I have quite a few on Goodreads. It's just, my name's Amanda Price on there. So, my review on Goodreads says, at first I wasn't loving this book. I found the jumping around between different people and the back and forth from past to present a little too jarring. Every time I would be getting into the story, it would shift times or people. After I got more or less accustomed to the shifts, I found myself liking it more. There were no real surprises or twists for me, but the story itself was good and quite emotional at times. The characters seemed well thought out and believable. I really enjoyed how it shows different perspectives on what happened, how different people reacted to it, and how one event affected many people's lives even after it occurred. The only reason I gave it a four star rating is because of how long it took me to get into it with all the shifting around. I listened to the audiobook and enjoyed the narration. I feel the narrator did a good job at portraying the emotions and usually I could tell the characters apart just from how she voiced them. And then I have spoilers after that. Right now I'll just talk about the book without going into spoilers. Um, I felt like the characters were well written, well thought out. I felt myself getting kind of emotionally attached to a couple of them. Um, I, like I said in my review, and as I'm saying, is I didn't like how much it jumped around at first because, you know, every time I'd be getting into it, it would shift, you know, to the past, or I'd be getting into the past and it'd shift to the present, or it would change perspectives. And toward the end, I actually like this because you get like snippets. Of, of everybody's lives leading up to the event and then after the event and I feel like it wouldn't have the same impact I guess if it started in the past and worked its way up and I'm not sure why exactly but it's just it was more dramatic I guess more impactful the way it showed little scenes here and there from the past and the present and then um, the characters I, I liked how she shifted from character to character because it was showing multiple angles of this, multiple sides, multiple perspectives. So you would see, you know, I'm trying to think of how to say it without giving away anything, but you see how the event affected everybody and 
how their lives were affected by the event that happened. And the narrator, I think she did really good. There was times I, I felt like she, you know, a different narrator might have did better on certain voices. I uh, felt like her, her voice capabilities, I guess you would say, wasn't quite up for some of the male voices. But she emoted really well. She made you feel what some of them were feeling. And, uh, I mean, this book had me in, like, tears occasionally. And I'm not an emotional person, but it was just really emotional. It's a really emotional book. And I'm not sure what else to say. So from now until I'll put the time on the screen where I'll stop. But I'm going to be giving spoilers now. So from here. So the book is about a school shooting. And I'll do my slight spoilers I wrote on Goodreads first. I said this does not contain major spoilers like the outcome or who all was involved, but if you want to get into the book, go into the book not knowing exactly what the horrible event was that happened or anything that led up to it, read no further. I warned you. I went into this book cold. I did not even read the summary. It is the book choice for a book club I am in, so I just picked it up on their suggestion. I'm glad I did. The book is about a school shooting and it's very emotional. It follows the characters involved and shows how this happened as well as the results of the horrible event. It goes back and forth between times, showing when the shooter was young and leading up to his trial. It also goes into some of the other people's lives involved, such as the DA, the prosecutor, the judge who was supposed to sit on the case, and the parents of the shooter. It delves into the past of the shooter and his relationships with some of the others. I was surprised surprised to find myself almost wishing the shooter would be acquitted after hearing his, his life. He was abused and bullied for so long and nothing seemed to make it better. Even his best friend ended up abandoning him and standing by often, often watching it happen. I feel that this shows how well the author writes. I most definitely do not think that someone should get off easily if he goes and kills multiple people, no matter his reasoning. So many things led up to the moment he went in and shot multiple people at his school. It makes you really think about your children and what they could be hiding from you. Yes, they look reasonably happy, but are they miserable inside and just putting on a happy face to the world? Is your child one of the bullies and you don't even realize it? How would you handle it if your child became a murderer of a victim of... The, sorry, the murder, a murderer or a victim of one? This one had me sleeping uneasily and will linger with me for a while. I recommend it to anyone who enjoys an emotional tale of things that hit a bit too close to home at times. So, here's what the major spoil spoilers. Um, so, yes, it's about a school shooting. The main character, Peter, he just goes in one day and shoots and kills multiple of his classmates and teachers and people that were in the school. Um, like I said, I'm going to get into major spoilers, so if you want to know, don't, not know everything that happens in this book, then you need to skip ahead. <laughs> Um, so it doesn't start, it starts, I cannot remember how it, exactly it starts, but it, it doesn't, it's just, so, I think it shows the lives of everybody, like, the judge is going about her day, and she's just not having a great day, like, you know, running late for work or whatever, couldn't find a parking spot, that kind of stuff, um, her daughter had been up all night studying, for a test and it shows you know her trying to get her daughter to eat breakfast and the daughter as soon as she will just go on to work but then the daughter throws away the breakfast and goes on to school or oh, her boyfriend shows up and takes her to school I'm not a fan of her boyfriend um I don't even remember how it introduces Peter but it, it kind of skips ahead to people finding out that something happened like the judge you know, finding out, and, oh, um, his mom is a midwife, I'm sorry, this is a little disjointed, his mom's a midwife, and she's, like, at the hospital working, you know, and, and helping deliver babies when she goes out to the nurse's station, and the nurses are all gathered around, and they're like, you know, there's been an explosion at the school, so, like I said, it jumps back and forth, it goes back to how the judge and the midwife used to be friends, and the judge is Josie's mom, the midwife, Lacey is um, Peter's mom. So Peter and Josie kind of grew up together for the, until, I don't know, after kindergarten sometime, elementary school. 
they were friends. They were really close friends. Like she always stuck up for him. He was a small child, weak. People picked on him from the first day of kindergarten. Like the, the moment he stepped on the bus, someone tripped him. And then they took his lunchbox, his Superman lunchbox that he loved. And, you know, with the lunch his mom made for him. And they threw it out the window and he just watched it, you know, bust open. At one time he watched someone, like, run over one of his lunchboxes. It's become a thing that happened, like, every single day. He would just get picked on and bullied. Like I said, this started in kindergarten. Like, fifth graders were doing this to a kindergartner. So it goes back and forth, showing how the moms used to be friends, how the, these kids used to be friends, and then what happened to make them not be friends anymore was um, his dad would take him hunting, or was a hunter, and he had guns in the basement. And Peter became kind of fascinated with guns, learning about guns. And one day, the parents caught Peter showing Josie a gun in the basement like she was holding it. Then the judge freaked out and didn't want her daughter around guns. And she didn't realize that, you know, there had even been guns in the house. So she did not, she no longer let Josie hang out with Peter. And Josie was like his protector. She was the one that stood up for him. That was like his only real friend, and they were very close. Skip forward years later, you know, in high school, he still picked on, constantly pushed into lockers. Uh, like, I think he got beat up outside of school a few times, and it was all by the crowd that Josie hangs out with. But at some point, Josie and him works together, and they start falling kind of back into the same old habits of the way they talked and joked with each other, and... He kept getting closer to her, and he started developing feelings for her, which for him was a good thing because he'd been called horrible names, homo and the F word and everything, and they were just, they constantly told him he was gay, so he started, he heard it so often, like daily, that he started wondering, and he like went to a gay bar to see if, you know, he was attracted to men and stuff, and he realized that he's not. He just wasn't really attracted to anybody, but then when he was working with her and he realized that he was getting feelings with her and he realized he's attracted to her, there's just no one else for him. So he writes her an email and sends it to her. Now, like I said, this has been going on, like he's been bullied every single day of his life, basically, since kindergarten. We find out that his older brother even did it. He would call him names and just treat him really mean in front of everybody. And I'm not sure if he was physically abusive, but I know he was verbally abusive to him. But never in front of the parents. But his brother died the year before this event happens. And that seemed to have affected him also. But what really set him off was he wrote this email to Josie telling her how much he cared about her. And he how he just felt, basically he feels whole with her. And he, he, he wants her to continue to be in his life. In the future, well, she doesn't ever see the email because one of her friends is with her in her room and she goes to the bathroom and her friend opens up her email and sees that and forwards it to her boyfriend and then tells him to send it out to everybody. So her boyfriend sends it out to the entire student body. So the next day, Peter approaches Josie in the cafeteria and whenever he's getting ready to talk to her, they start reading the email aloud and laughing about it and then her boyfriend walks up behind Peter and pants him pants and underwear so he's standing there naked in front of this entire cafeteria full of students who are all laughing at him and that did not sit well with him obviously so that was kind of one of his breaking point I mean he doesn't immediately do anything after that but he goes you know he's he's going about his day and uh you find out that he he's really smart. He doesn't make good grades, but he's really smart. And he, like, started out learning, like, HTML, and then he starts learning, you know, other coding, and he starts making video games, and he's made vi a video game that him and his one friend, that another outcast at the high school, you know, they played, he's played it with him, and basically the game is you go into a high school and you shoot all the students, and you win by killing all the students. And that comes up during, you know, the later date trial. But um, he's, I'm not sure how that fit in to the story at this point. But, I mean, it comes up a couple times. It's not really relevant so much as, you know, 
kind of a creepy factor, I guess, until the trial. But it kind of shows that he's already kind of thinking along the lines of kill all the students. So, I don't know, I got kind of lost on the timeline, but very soon after the whole pantsing incident, he's just really depressed, you know, and really stressed, and then somehow he, I guess he gets on his computer and he sees that email, and apparently that's what just sets him off, that reminder of what happened. And he packs a couple pistols that he is, or handgun glocks, I think, that he has stole from the neighbor's house. His neighbor was a retired cop. And he knew where he kept the gun, so he stole those. And he had two shot, sawed off shotguns and multiple clips of ammo for the guns. And he goes to the school. And he has a pipe bomb that he built because you can learn anything online. And he, I guess, I'm just going by part of the trial now. It's not this linear in the book. But, you know, he sees his one friend in the parking lot and tells him he should go home because something's about to happen. And then he sets off the pipe bomb in Josie's boyfriend's car. And he goes to the school. He shoots a girl in the leg on the front steps. And then he just proceeds to walk into the school and start shooting people. And I don't know if it's random or if he had specific people in mind at that point. I know that he they find out later he has a yearbook in his house with people's faces circled. And then Josie's is circled, but then there's a line through it and it says, let her live. He goes through and he's shooting people. I think he shot people in the hall, maybe in the principal's office. He goes into the cafeteria, shoots people, and then after everybody runs out, he says he like does stuff in the cafeteria, like looks at someone's book and listens to see what music they were playing, and then he sits down and pours himself a bowl of cereal and eats the cereal. And that part just really stuck to me. He sat down and ate a bowl of Rice Krispies. So anyway, I won't. I won't get into the trial, or what happens, or the twist, because even though this is major spoilers, I don't want to give away everything, because you might still, after hearing this, want to read it yourself, because there is a twist, even though it wasn't a big surprise to me, I don't think it's going to be a huge surprise to anybody, except maybe why, because I haven't even went into this person, that person, this other person, you know, all these people that were involved, I haven't went into a lot of the other people that pop up, and you see a little bit of their history, with him or history with each other. All I can say is the trial is kind of harsh at times and just I mean the whole book is so emotional but like I said I gave it a four star out of five rating partly because it just took me so long to get into it. I really didn't like the jumping around even though I do think it was effective by the end and I think the writing is really well. So I would recommend it to anybody that wants to watch, read it. I almost said watch it. I would, I'd probably watch this also if it was a movie. Even though it's, it's kind of traumatic. Because I don't know, school shootings. I will go off on a tangent now. So yeah, I'm done with the book review. I'm a substitute teacher part time. And there has been, there hasn't been a school shooting at the school that I work at. But there was a lockdown and there was a teenager with a gun. At, it's been a couple years, I think. And it was kind of horrifying. And the students, they, they, they had drills all the time. Because you know, there's been so many school shootings that they didn't even, they thought it was just another drill or, or something. And it took me so long just to get them to settle down. I was like, if there had been actually someone walking through shooting, then they, they would have known where we were. They would have known where we were in the room because they would have hurt everybody. I had a... It was terrifying, and, and, you know, I didn't know what was going on. All we knew was, you know, we got the little siren that they do, and the principal came on, and he told everybody to be quiet and, and lock the doors and stay still. And, like I said, the students thought it was a drill, but I could tell by his voice that it, it wasn't a typical drill. And uh, we find out that it was a boy with a gun. It was in another building on the campus, because there's multiple buildings on our uh, high school campus. But, um, just, you know, on the same block. It's a small school. And he brought the gun, and nobody ever found out for sure why. We know that he had some issues with a few people, and he'd had issues with one of the teachers. And a lot of people thought he brought the gun to do something to that teacher, because he'd argued with her the day before. But nobody knows for sure. He, he got in a lot of trouble, obviously. 
and he just had it in his backpack. I thought he, he was just walking around with it in his backpack. We don't have metal detectors or anything. We're a small community, small school, with no, not much violence. I mean, there are gangs around and stuff, gang-affiliated people, I should say, but we're, we're a community with five prisons in Texas. I haven't said where I live, but I live in Texas, and there's a lot of prisons in Texas, big prisons. I've worked at one for a few years. My husband still works at one. So there's a lot of people that are, you know, they have moved to this area because their family member is in one of the prisons here. And, uh, I mean, the one I worked at had over 3,000, I think, inmates. And it's all male. It's all male prisons here. And a lot of them are gang-affiliated, so a lot of the, their family members are gang-affiliated. But it usually stays out of the school. I mean, I know some of the, the teenagers are, and they'll talk about it freely, but there's been no violence, gang-related violence there. And, uh... So we're, like I said, we don't have metal detectors. We don't have backpack checks. We don't have any of the stuff that I've seen, like in movies on, for bigger schools, because we haven't had to worry about it. After that, now that we have an actual, like a police force that that patrols our schools now, and, and we have locks at the doors, and, and you can't get in unless you have a student ID or a teacher ID or something that has, you know, you'll be able to scan it. Like, I don't even have one. I have to, like, ring the bell and they'll let me in. Because they, I mean, they know me as I'm walking up. They know me on site. So a lot of times they'll just let me in without me having to ring the bell. But if I have to go out for any, outside for any reason, then I have to get rung back in. So it's, it's brought about a bunch of change, which is probably good. But, and the students still don't really take it seriously, which I don't want them living in fear. But, if they have, you know, that alarm go off, I, I would think that they would, with all the violence in the world, maybe they should actually pretend like each drill is real. I don't want them to be scared all the time, but I don't want them to get shot or something because they didn't take something seriously. Anyway, that's my tangent. Um, I'm not sure what else to say. That's not book related. I'm reading another book, so I'll probably do another. I, I listen to audiobooks. I shouldn't say I read books. I do read books occasionally, but I'm usually so busy with homework and because I'm a full time student. And then I do have part time jobs. I've been taking a couple months off for health reasons. And uh, I have a surgery coming up, maybe in January. And then after that, I should go back to, to work. I have three part time jobs. But um, someone took my place at a gas station that I worked at as a cashier. And then I can choose my own days at the school. And then my other job, I work for a NASA um, scientific balloon center. So I'm on call resource is what I'm called. So if they put up a scientific balloon and they need people to watch it and send the satellite coordinates or whatever, then they'll call me or one of the other people that are on call. And it's usually a 12-hour shift, uh, three days in a row, and then you get three days off. And it's nice because I can do my schoolwork there. I can sit and read or knit or cross-stitch or whatever I want to do as long as I check the monitors every 15 minutes or so, write down some numbers every hour, and update the satellite coordinates every two hours. And it's basically a retired person's job, and there's no training involved. It's really nice, and it pays like twice as much as my other part-time jobs. So, but that's a, I've only actually got to do it, like, one time. Plus, I, I can also do a national, for a national escort, which I think pays the same. And they can send me anywhere in the world that they need someone escorted. Anywhere there's, like, a NASA facility. It's really nice having the NASA badge, so I, I could actually go into any NASA facility. Um, not restricted areas, but I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, um, it's already been, what, 24 minutes? I don't know if I'm going to edit any out or just let my rambling stay in. My video is going to be choppy because my webcam is messing up. I recorded the audio separately because it was messing up so much. I'm going to have to edit it a lot because um, it was glitching and then it turned off for no reason twice. One time I actually thought I was recording for quite a bit and then I realized it was not recording. So the video is going to jump where I've 
done a section of stitching without on, not being on camera. It's very frustrating. I really wanted to start doing like stitch with me's and stuff because I love to cross stitch and that's usually what I do, not diamond painting. But I started a couple like hashtag challenge things that made me want to finish up some Halloween diamond paintings this month. From now on I might do a little more cross stitch or at least an even amount of cross stitch and diamond painting and hopefully maybe throw some knitting or crochet in a latch hook. I like to do all of those plus I like to draw and paint. That's why my, my channel is such a hot mess because I like to do so many things and it's hard for me to stay focused on one thing too long. Anyway, audiobooks. I'm hoping maybe to do the like cross stitch and chat about books kind of videos more often because I do tend to listen to a lot of audiobooks. Like I said, schoolwork has slowed me down a little bit, but while I'm stitching or while I'm diamond painting, I really like to listen to an audiobook. Um, if there is anything you would like to see on my channel, please feel free to comment below. Just, I'm I'm still new to YouTube. I mean, I've had the channel for a long time, but actually getting on and talking to people and, and being active, is it's new to me. So thank you again for watching. Um, please consider liking and subscribing and maybe even sharing my video. I really don't have many watchers yet. Many viewers, I should say. Watchers, like I'm Buffy. Um, I have a weird sense of humor, so if I get on here and talk more often, then you will learn that pretty quick. Weird sense of humor, a lot of pop culture references will usually leave my mouth. The I guess I could have told you about, but I can't really tell you about the, the piece I'm working on, except for it's 50 by 66 centimeters. Um, I got it from another YouTuber. And, um, what's her name? Nimcrafts? I will tag her in the description because she had received it from a company and decided that she did not want to stitch it. It's really dark and it's, it's kind of like the big head, not really big head, but the head's a little bigger than its body proportionately. And she just found it kind of creepy and it's dark and got a lot of dark colors. So I was like, I really like it. So she sent it to me, and now I'm stitching it. And I was going to start something else for my birthday, but I don't have all the floss yet, or even enough to really get, give it a good start. So I figured I would start this. And I really like her. And I will insert a picture here, because I don't know if I even showed it at the beginning. If I find out where it is available at, I will link it below. And if it has a name, because this is um, written in Chinese. And a lot of times my translator app does not work well. I'll try it real quick though. But she's got, what I'm kind of sad about is that I do not think her hat is going to show up because it's got, let me look, sorry if it's rattly. It has 42 collars. But most of the hat and the background are both black. So I really don't know. A lot of her outfit is black too. So I don't know if the hat, if you're going to be able to tell that she's wearing a hat. Or if it's just going to look like there's colors in the background around her head. But either way, I think I'm really going to like this. And it's one of my bigger cross stitch kits. I have some bigger cross stitch pieces I've worked on. But they've not been kits and they've not been stamped. Stamped is new to me. I really got into it this year. And I've been watching a lot of um, YouTube YouTubers that do the stamp cross stitch. Like Stitcherella. She's one of my favorites. Um, I think Amanda's Crafty Corner. I know she does. Yeah, she does the stamp because I got I bought a kind of cross stitch off her because she doesn't do counting. She also does diamond painting. I'll tag both of them in the description box. I watch them a lot. And the lady I got this piece from. And several others. But I won't go into all that right now. Because I'm already running on to a half hour. And I was going to stop talking after my book review. I've had a lot of caffeine and drinking an energy drink. So anyway. 
So yep, yeah, tomorrow is my birthday, which means I'll probably upload this on my birthday since it's my birthday start. And um, I will link on my social media accounts below. I have one of those link tree, or not link tree, but I can't remember what it's called, but it's just a link that will show you all my accounts. I do post on Facebook, several. I have a couple pages plus my personal. Um, I post on Instagram, TikTok occasionally, Pinterest. I have a lot of Pinterest boards. So if you want to follow me on anything, feel free. And like I said, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you liked my rambling. It's supposed to be book review, but it was more just telling you about the book than actually a review. But yes, I love the book, and I do recommend it. And I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you so much. Bye-bye.